Hello, lifers! Welcome to Jason Love. No, Jason Love with Jason Love's life. Take, take two. I don't do third takes. Today we're doing our normal question and answer session. I like to call it couch no. questions. Nope. You're not Q and A with Leah Love. <laughs> uh, our first video didn't uh, didn't record, so. Okay, I don't do third takes. So we're, we're taking a second stab at this. Uh, I guess Leah doesn't like this bit, but if you have a, a suggestion for this uh, Q&A session, put it, in the, put it in the comments. And also, if you're new or, or just as a reminder, uh, and you have questions, put them in this video for next week, and that makes my life a lot easier. I can just grab them instead of having to run around and look for, grab the questions from other, from other videos. Do you have anything before we start? I never have anything. <laughs> so the first question is a bit cryptic, but interesting in itself. Someone was talking about their own child, and they, it was a little bit vague, but they said, you know, what, what boils down to what does the future hold for autistic children? And so, I'm curious, Leah, what does the future hold for autistic children? I'm sorry. It's just so forced the second time. We were talking about... Uh, I think Leah's mentioned in the last one. You, you don't look at the future too much. Just live in the now. That's enough. Um, and your kid will eventually get to the future on his or her own. And then it'll be a lovely surprise. And Leah's answer is better than mine. But I, I talked about, uh, I think I re respond to this one about um, each, you have, each child is an individual and they're in different parts of the spectrum. Uh, and then you have all these situations, you know, the environment, um, catching it early. So luckily we caught it with Frumkin, you know, relatively early. And it allows for him having different therapies. Uh, therapy options will make a difference. There's a lot of variables. And so it's, it's impossible to really say. And with Frumkin, you know, to, also too with parents, it's really the question is, Will they be independent? And sort of a little aside, talking to people, especially adults or even children with autism, mostly online, um, I know they hate being compared to like, you know, are they going to look, are they going to be normal? And so I think that's a great point. It's, I'm, I'm sort of learning myself not to have that mindset because it's not nice for the child. It's Yeah. Anyway, we should have a wider um, understanding of the word normal. Mm -hmm. Normal isn't what it used to be yeah normal by definition isn't normal yeah it's <laughs> well, not normal and so uh so really it's about independence and frumpkin seems to be on that path to being independent um i know too there's a lot of people who have autism were never diagnosed as adults and so well, i think the, as children yeah i mean they're adults now they were never diagnosed as children and so they're living normal, there's that word again, they're, they're living their lives independently without people even realizing they have autism. And so I think that fear of like, oh, my child's not going to be able to be independent kind of comes from the fact that the people who were labeled back then were more extreme or under certain situations. So um, that can build up the fear. And that's why Leah has a way better answer is... Do what you can today. Uh, the rest will follow naturally. Yeah, just keep working on it. Research. Uh, do what you can. Try not to worry too hard. Yeah, I guess research is research. <laughs> not a good thing. Is not necessary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to living in the now. Yeah. Although it might be helpful to your personal process, sure. Yeah, and I think there. Yeah, it's it's hard be, to know how much because finding resources is important. So like that kind of research is good, especially locally. I mean, we got lucky that our we contacted school district early. Yep. And then, you know, sort of fell into place. I'm so. being paged. Oh, being paged. Do you want to go? So then we got another question from Cla Cla Clarissa in Germany. Guten Tag. Uh, I've been working on my German. Nein! <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's a good joke. Actually, with Frumpkin, I would say nine, nine. And then he would go, ten. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was funny. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, she asked, which kind of autism does Frumpkin have? So. He's on the mild to moderate side. Yeah, and, and 
there's no label for what he has. Like, they got rid of the label Asperger's because it's such a huge umbrella term anyway. And, and I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if you would fall under Asperger's. It's, it's no. I don't know. It's no. really impossible to say it for, for, for us. And I don't know even if, like, um, how often those terms are, are used. He's verbal, I guess, would be a, a descriptor that we can use. Um, he can, he's getting better at it. Okay, I'll go on. So the next question came in. Uh, it wasn't, I guess, really a question of it. It was more of a comment about the parents' fear they have an autistic child and they're kind of worried about their other children. And specifically, like, their youngest, who she's worried about regression. And so I thought, um, that's something we haven't really talked about. So would you say, I guess, first would you say that Frumpkin had regression? Um, he would forget words. And see, I don't, re I don't remember him forgetting words, but I do remember him forgetting. We had taught him sign language um, for more. Is this more? Yeah. Okay. So for more, um, and he had learned that, and, and it was one of those things where it wasn't like all of a sudden the next day he forgot it, but probably within a few weeks. Um, he would forget it. He, he didn't seem to have it. He and then know. he wouldn't use it again. Yeah, he never used it again. Um, and he had a few others, but I can't. Maybe he had, I know he had drank because we had taught him. Anyways, so whether that was actual regression or whether it was just us not enforcing that and he just forgot. Um, now that you say that, I think he, I do remember him. Maybe it was some alphabet letters or something too hmm. that he had forgotten. I feel like there was something else now that I think about it. Well. A cup and milk, a diaper. I meant, I meant saying. Saying? I think he had learned a couple of, like, kind of, he didn't know like the alphabet, but he could do like parts. I don't know. I might be wrong on that. It's kind of hard to remember. Um, but he did forget words. Okay. Yeah. So I. But then there's other children who, who will actually do like a full. They'll learn new words. They're on milestones, and then all of a sudden they just they stop, or go completely back to where they can't talk at all. And so that was in our experience, and that's another ex example of like the mystery of autism and variety. Uh, how much different it is between between kids. Between kids. We were supposed to last week talk about where they got their names. Where they got their names. So And I had completely forgotten that Frumpkin was actually his hobbit name. Yeah, I wanted to do YouTube videos and uh, with with Frumpkin and so I knew I didn't want to use his real name just because if someone future boss typed his name into a search engine that would come up yeah, yeah, there's actually a couple parts. So that was one is, is to keep, I forget what they call that, but where you, you keep... Anonymity? Your, yeah, you keep your child's name until they're old enough to, like, make that decision themselves. Ah. Um, I don't know if that's going to... I don't know if we'll be able to get to the, him being 18. <laughs> We're going to try for as long as we can to keep his <laughs> anonymity. Uh, also, too, just to help keep from, you know, there's bad people on, online, so it's always any small uh, defense is is a good thing it's to advisable. have. advisable. And so, uh, and I know there's a lot of people who don't do that, and I think that's fine. It's just, that's kind of something we came up with early on. So Frumpkin's name came from that, and then specifically I was going to do a video with him as a hobbit. And he kind of looked kind of like hobbitish, I would say. He was a cute, cute little baby. A little chunky, big feet. He could have been a hobbit baby. Yeah, it would have been funny. And so, unfortunately, I didn't make that video. Uh, I just remember I wanted to try to, I wanted to make a big fake beard and say, you shall not pass. <laughs> that would be funny. So you didn't make this video. I didn't make this video. You spared the world. I spared the world for me as, uh, as Gandalf <laughs> the Grey, telling Frumpkin he shall not pass, as, which doesn't make sense because he was in The Hobbit, but uh, I thought that would have been funny. And not the Bell Rock. Oh, I'm such a nerd. You are such a nerd. So then, originally, I thought what would be a good name to go with Frumpkin uh, and I came up with Lump... No. You didn't come up with Lumpkin. Okay. That was my idea. So when I came up with Lumpkin... <laughs> Go ahead. I'll let you tell that story then. Well, I thought it sounded like something Beatrix Potter would have come up with. Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, Lumpkin, Nutkin, Squirrel Nutkin. Um, but when she came out, she was orange like a pumpkin because of the jaundice. Yeah, she had jaundice. So she was jaundiced for a long time, so Pumpkin just came out of that. Yeah, and, and we figured Lumpkin is too terrible. Like, it's a good name, but it's not a good name. For it's a good girl. name for a cute little girl, but 
It's no, a, Lumpkin's not a good name for a cute little girl. I thought it was. I think I still think it's cute, but you, there's too much temptation to go, hey, Lumpy. Yeah, the, it, to me it implies it, yeah, like a, some, some issue with lumps. So, uh, Pumpkin's better. Mm -hmm. So the last question was about grant writing. Uh, about the grants, I just want to say I did not get the grant for the business grant, which is unfortunate. Uh, it would have been a long road anyways. I got third place on that, so they had... Um, the first one goes off to like nationals and then they compete to get like the big cash prizes. Uh, so it's a little bit of a bummer, but at the same time, uh, you know, it was, they were kind of like, congratulations, you made the top three. And it's like, oh, congratulations. You don't get the grant. <laughs> uh, I do get some press out of it. I don't know what that's going to look like. I have to contact the person and figure that out. It's kind of weird because they did it like right before last week, like Wednesday or Thursday, and so now it's like, I don't know if they're gonna be in Monday, so I'm gonna send them an email, I don't know. They have, there's some paperwork I have to fill out, which I'm kind of, I don't know. Anyways, so I didn't get that grant. The other grant, we're still pending. Uh, I mentioned before that I went to the meeting, couldn't stay for the whole time, so still a mystery. They said in their little thing that the, it'll be announced in July, so that's very vague. Uh, I'm gonna email them probably, um, I'm going to email them Wednesday since the 4th is Tuesday, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. 4th is Tuesday. Email on Wednesday. So I'm hoping to have an answer for you by, I guess that'd be next week. Whatever that, the, the next time we do this, I guess. Sometime near future. Yeah, sometime near future. Um, that would be great if we got it. Uh, the nice, great thing kind of out of that is I have a potential video filmmaking gig. Excited and nervous. And that should help at least a little bit. If I could get both the grant and this video gig. Uh, the video gig, I just haven't had the contract signed, but the person, you know, it's one of those things where until this contract signed, I, I am always anxious. Uh, if we can get both of them, then things would be great. If we get one of them, it will be pretty good because they're about the same amount. Uh, I am also considering doing a Kickstarter because we've done Kickstarter before, but that would take uh, a lot of planning. So uh, even though I'm mentioning it, like there would be a lot of announcements before we get to that point. If we get the grant, and the thing that would be the ideal. So, do you think of anything else? I never have anything else. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Subscribe if you're new. Uh, we'll be doing we do these weekly, and then we do daily videos. And I'll see you tomorrow. You want to point? No, I don't want to point. I am not a pointer. Okay. All right. Okay, and if it didn't record, I don't do third takes.